All right. So <clears throat> my name is Carlos Salvatierra, and I am an undergraduate student here at Tennessee Tech. And my presentation today will be over biomass energy. And so firstly, uh, biomass energy makes up 5% of the total energy produced in the U.S. And what biomass is, is it's essentially created from uh, leftover, I guess, like waste that would otherwise be thrown in a landfill. Um, this can vary to very di various different substances. Um, and there are various methods of chemically converting it to energy of different sources. Um, one of which is combustion, just directly tossing it into an incinerator and then burning it and producing power that way. Uh, other methods are pyrolysis, gasification, and pressure treating, which uh, take the biomass and chemically convert it in other ways. So more on combustion. Uh, in a second. So here are different types of biomass energy. Um, it, you have like uh, sewage, animal manure, wood, leftover crops and residue. You have leftover vegetables and fats. And also, of course, garbage left in landfills. And a, a major old method of uh, biomass energy is just, as I said, directly tossing things into an incinerator or uh, powering a power plant. And this has been done, I guess I looked into uh, Dominion Energy. They have a few facilities in Virginia, in Hopewell, Alta Vista, and Southampton. Um, and each um, unit produces 51 megawatts of energy and can power up to 38,000 homes. And what they do with the leftover residue is they convert it into like a fertilizer and they'll give it to like farmers and stuff to put uh, and um, fertilize their fields with crops and stuff. But there are some drawbacks to it. Um, mainly like burning wood is very bad for the environment because it releases a lot of excess chemicals, which just hurt the atmosphere. Now, newer methods are, uh, one of them is pyrolysis. And basically with pyrolysis, what you do is you take some biomass of whatever you have, and then you chemically convert it at high temperature without oxygen. And essentially what you do is um, through that high temperature, it, um, will create three different products, one of them being bio oil, and then you have biochar, which is the leftover burnt residue, and then you have a syngas, which is all the leftover gases. Now, as you see, I have this um, chart right here, which shows the whole process. You have the biomass, which first you have to preheat it and then grind it up into smaller amounts so you get more surface area to burn it. And then it gets thrown into the pyrolyzer without oxygen at high heat. And it gets separated first into char and sand, which gets thrown back into the furnace. And through the condenser, you separate the bio oil and the syngas. Syngas can be used to continue powering the furnace for the process to start all over again. And then the bio oil is later on converted and refined into something like used for cars or something. Now, next we have gasification. Um, basically, it's taking kind of similar to pyrolysis where you have something set at high temperature, no combustion, and then later on you add oxygen. Now, basically, the goal here is to create a gas um, at the end of the process. And you have um, first you take biomass, obviously drying it off again, you know, and then you have the pyrolysis, you know, creating the charcoal tar gases. And you crack the, uh, they use cracking to take whatever um, products from the pyrolysis and remove all the useful gases that are within it. And essentially what you are left with is 
useful gases, hydrogen and carbon, and then you are left with uh, nitrogen as well, and also the char ash, which is leftover residue uh, from the burnt products of the pyrolysis. Now, the next one is hydro treating. It's actually a lot more widely used than the other two. So specifically in uh, oil refineries, like a majority of oil refineries have some sort of hydro treating um, process going on inside of them. And what they do is, what hydro treating does is it refines oil into a more useful product. Um, basically the goal is to desulfurize it so that it burns more efficiently because without sulfur, um, well, as I said, it burns more efficiently and it also helps, um, what is it? It's, uh, the catalytic processes, um, of burning it. Yeah. Um, and so I have a chart here, which also shows the process. Um, first hydrogen is added, which is why it's called hydro treating into the feed and at high pressure and temperature it is, um, it is separated into uh, the useful gases and the desulfurized products. And um, the sulfur itself is combined with hydrogen and released into a scrubber, which the sulfur can be then used for other purposes. And any remaining hydrogen is then put back into the feed system. But the biggest problem with hydro cheating is that the companies will have to eventually purchase hydrogen from an outside vendor because not all the hydrogen that is used within the process is recovered. Only about 15 to 30% is recovered. So that can be very expensive. Now, uh, pros and cons, as I was mentioning before, there's a lot of biomass in the US, which is just sitting, waiting to be used for future energy purposes. Um, this energy can reduce the, our dependency on foreign oil, so makes cheaper oil. Um, as I said, from the hydro treating, reducing sulfur content, as stated by the EPA, can enable advanced emission controls and reduces air pollution. So you have that as well. Um, now, this is a claim made more by the government than anything. It's um, debatable, but the carbon emissions can be offset by the plants producing the biomass. There is research research still being done in that, but um, essentially they say that since you have the carbon that the plant has created and is burned from the plant, then that carbon gets taken and by new plants and then there's a cycle so that essentially you're not creating new carbon, but some people do refute that. And Another thing which is also kind of argued is that for pyrolysis specifically, creating the bio oil is a lot cleaner than the current methods of um, producing oil. Now, some people don't like the idea of pyrolysis, but it actually is a lot cleaner than producing, like going drilling in a field and doing all that nonsense. Now, the cons, I listed one for every specific method of uh, chemical conversion. As I mentioned before, with combustion, it obviously directly burning wood releases toxic chemicals, which can hurt the atmosphere. Um, the bio oil is hard to store. It is not thermally stable, and it is that makes it hard to refine. Um, for hydro treating, um, as I mentioned before, you lose hydrogen in the process and have to purchase it, making it more expensive. And it's kind of similar for gasification. Um, it is expensive because it is like high startup cost, really, is the main issue. And for all of these processes, mainly with like pyrolysis, is um, with the feedstock that you put into uh, the process, it requires like a certain preparation. It is very... Um, touchy with the chemical process. Like if um, something is introduced, which can alter the chemical conversion, then it can reduce your efficiency by a very high amount, which can be pretty detrimental.
Now, moving on to a case study, uh, we have the Brightmark Corporation, which they have created a plant in Indiana. This is um, a pyrolysis plant, which converts uh, leftover residue into oil. Um, currently, what they are doing is they are converting plastic. And before creating this plant, like as of, I believe it was 2021, they had already converted like 4 million pounds of plastic and they're looking to like do even more. Um, as I mentioned before, pyrolysis is a lot cleaner than other methods of producing oil. And they're um, current, <clears throat> currently they um, are looking to offset 6 million pounds of carbon by 2025 which is pretty impressive. And as you see, there is 39 to 139% increased efficiency. But as I mentioned before, that is due to the very sensitive chemical process of converting the uh, products into oil. And that is pretty much it. I have my sources here. So I'm open to any questions.